Hello friends, I am Dr. Ajay Adam, anesthesia faculty at DBMCI. Uh, so we are just going to discuss uh, PG recall questions of anesthesia. So till now I was able to uh, get only two questions. So let's first discuss these two questions and as soon as I will get other questions, I will discuss it again. So the two questions which I got so far, this is the first one. Identify the equipment which is commonly used for COVID-19 patients in ICU. Hudson mask, Venturi mask, non-rebreathing mask, simple face mask. This was actually very much expected because actually oxygen delivery devices became very, very popular in uh, <coughs> COVID and uh, oxygen delivery devices, uh, I'll not go into much details, but you know they are being classified as uh, high flow and low flow. High flow includes Venturi mask. So high flow delivers fix oxygen delivery. They are accurate. While low flow, that includes your simple oxygen mask. And you know that simple oxygen mask is called as Hudson mask or McCartney mask. Then uh, uh, your nasal cannula or oxygen mask with reservoir back, they all are classified as low flow systems. So high flow systems, I told you, they are accurate. They delivered fixed uh, uh, FiO2. While low flow systems are not accurate, their performance is variable and get varied with the changes in the respiratory parameters like uh, respiratory rate or tidal volume or flow requirement. So this is simple oxygen mask with the reservoir. So this is simple oxygen mask and I think many of you would have used this simple oxygen mask and this is with reservoir. So this is simple oxygen mask with reservoir. Uh, <clears throat> So very important uh, not only to identify, actually this I'll say is a very easy question. Otherwise, they could have actually asked little more, particularly regarding the maximum oxygen which you can deliver with particular kind of oxygen delivery device and what should be the maximum flow that you should keep. So this is a very important thing. Maybe, of course, uh, uh, not in this exam. Maybe in future exams you can get this. So we'll rapidly revise it. Uh, we can say uh, device maximum flow and maximum delivered oxygen that is maximum FiO2. FiO2 is fraction of the oxygen delivered. So nasal cannula maximum flow you can keep is 6 liter. At 6 liter maximum oxygen delivered is around 44% or you can say FiO2 as 0.44%. So this is important. Like I've seen people using nasal cannula and giving 10 liters. So they are just wasting the oxygen. At 6 liter, it has their, it is maximum performance, which is 44%. Then simple oxygen mask. Simple oxygen mask, you know, also called as McCartney mask or Hudson mask. Maximum flow you can keep is 10 liter and maximum oxygen you can expect is 60%. But if you add reservoir, oxygen mask with reservoir, you can use up to 15 liters and maximum oxygen you can see is around 80 to 90%. Then Venturi mask, maximum flow you can use is 15 liter and the maximum FiO2 is 60%. But this 60% is different from this 60% or in fact this 80% or 44% that this 60% is fixed. Means if you have set a flow of 15 liter and you have used Venturi mask which delivers 60% means it will deliver 60%. It will not be affected by the changes in the patient respiratory parameters while performance of low flow systems that is nasal cannula simple oxygen mask or oxygen mask with reservoir can vary with the changes in the patient respiratory parameters so this actually you have to know maximum fio2 and and it's not only important from questions point of view it is very important from clinical point of view because say if you want to give higher oxygen then you should know that uh, which equipment i should use like, like a patient requirement is very high so obviously i'll be using Oxygen mask with reservoir, it can deliver 80 to 90%. But I, if I feel that requirement is very low, 
then I'll be using nasal cannula. Or if I feel that accuracy of uh, oxygen is very important, then I'll be preferring be using venturi mask. So according to the requirement, you can use the device. So obviously, needless to say, it is non-rebreathing mask. Non-rebreathing mask. Actually, non-rebreathing mean, means there is a valve here. So this valve does not allow patient expiratory gases to enter the bag. Only inspiratory gases and inspiratory gases will come from the bag. So this is this will be attached to oxygen source. So this oxygen will fill this uh, bag. And when patient inspire, gases will come through this bag. Since there is a significant accumulation of gases, which will meet the flow requirement of the patient, so it can deliver high uh, <coughs> oxygen. So it is rebreath non rebreathing because expiratory gases will vent out through these holes. It cannot be eggs. It cannot re-enter the bag, so it is called as non rebreathing bath. So advantage is since gases are not rebreathed. So obviously there will not be rebreathing. So again that will help in delivering us higher oxygen. So among these you can say maximum oxygen we can deliver is with oxygen mask with reservoir. And there's the notes you can see oxygen delivery devices. This is uh, notes media screenshot. So this is nasal cannula. This is oxygen mask with reservoir you can identify. If you remove this reservoir, it becomes simple oxygen mask that is Hudson mask or McCartney mask and this is Venturi mask. And depending on the uh, Venturi device selected, you can decide how much percentage will be delivered like it is blue. So blue will be delivering 28%. So this is a Venturi device. Here it's very small image we can't see otherwise it is written 50% uh, and uh, 15 liter so if you give, use 15 liter with this purple device then uh, the delivered oxygen will be 50% but that 50% will be accurate question number two in this procedure to monitor neuromuscular blockage which nerve is being tested ulnar radial median metacarpal neuromuscular monitoring is obviously done when we have to use uh, the doses of muscle accents very meticulously. So routinely we are not using but say if the patient is suffering from neuromuscular disease or suffering from some muscular dystrophy where the sensitivity of muscle accent is tremendously increased we give doses of muscle accent as per neuromuscular monitoring. So for neuromuscular monitoring you know most Commonly used muscle is adductor pollicis and you know that adductor pollicis is supplied by ulnar nerve. However, the ideal muscle for neuromuscular monitoring is corrugator supercilii uh, or orbicularis oculi. Why? Because relaxation in corrugator supercilii or <coughs> orbicularis oculi parallel with the larynx. Because head and neck muscle goes together. But it is not possible to apply electrodes over face or eyelids. So therefore most commonly we are using is adductor pollicis. Because adductor pollicis you can see that there is enough space to apply electrodes. And it is obviously on the medial side. So obviously it is ulnar nerve. And uh, uh, <coughs> so it will stimulate the ulnar nerve. That will uh, stimulate adductor pollicis muscle. And the movement of this thumb will be not only seen visually, it will be recorded in our monitor also. And then there are many modalities which are being used, but the most commonly used, you know, is called as strain of four. Where we give four stimulus, each of two hertz frequency. First response is called T1, second T2, T3 and T4. The ratio between T4 to T1 is called as strain of 4 ratio. So in normal person, 
you know that m if when you are not given muscle relaxation amplitude height of all responses will be same so t4 to t1 ratio will be 1 muscle relaxation you know are depolarizers and non depolarizers so depolarizers you know that amplitude height of all four responses will keep on decreasing simultaneously so obviously the ratio will remain 1 while with non depolarizers the pattern you see is that amplitude height of fourth response will keep on decreasing in comparison to the first response so t4 to t ratio will keep on decreasing and this process is called as fading fading so fading you can simply say is exhibited by non depolarizers so again i will say this was very easy question that they have just asked you to identify the nerve otherwise they could have go little uh, more deeper so important you can remember is that fading on neuromuscular monitoring is exhibited by non depolarizers so one reason i told you for choosing uh, <coughs> muscle is attracted policy supplied by ulnar nerve one reason i told you is that there is enough space to apply electrodes then there is another reason and that is if you uh, see the sequence of blockade first to be blocked is head and neck muscles then respiratory trunk or abdominal muscles and last to be blocked are limb muscles peripheral muscles and recovery is also in same order means first to recover will be head and neck then respiratory trunk or abdominal muscles and last to recover will be limb muscles now we are choosing adductor pollicis so if there is a relaxation in adductor pollicis that means head and neck muscles has already been relaxed so we can safely intubate the patient at the time of recovery if the power in adductor pollicis is returned that means power in laryngeal pharyngeal and respiratory muscles has recovered so patient will be able to maintain his uh, <coughs> respiratory parameters tidal volume as well as able to protect his airways because reflexes will also return so it is safe to extubate the patients now you can understand that why we are most commonly using alarm and that we have discussed uh, in a nose too i told you that uh, most commonly used is electropolysis supplied by alarm however i told you ideal is corrugator superior cilii or orbicular jocoli but practically not possible so we are using electropolysis <coughs> and this i told you that central muscles are blocked that is head and neck muscles are blocked earlier than abscept abdominal thoracic respiratory and last to be blocked is limb and require recovery sequence is same so only uh, right now as i told you i could find only these uh, two questions if you have uh, more questions please send so that we can discuss and as soon as if i find other questions from other sources definitely uh, i'll come up again to discuss these questions otherwise also if you have any queries you are most welcome to send your queries to our medical facebook egurukul and we will try to help so i hope that all of you will come up with flying colors and even if not then it's just a matter of 6 months you are going to have a neat pg or next whatever Uh, after six months, so you will shine it again. Before that, there will be PGI. Before that, there will be INI CET. So uh, <clears throat> don't get disheartened if you don't get through. Because nowadays, uh, looking at the Facebook, I really feeling very saddened that many students even have attempt uh, had committed suicide. This is very unfortunate. so i know this is out of track but it's very important to tell you that there are much more things in life one thing is very good to be uh, passionate about a branch but if you don't get don't think that one branch is superior than other down the lane after uh, spending 
uh, two three decades in medical profession i have seen that every branch is equally good and so branch okay you like some branch very nice well and good but that should not become your obsession passion is okay but it should not become your obsession if you are getting para clinical or even academic branches you can really do very well in your life with much comfortable life maybe down the line after two decades you very you may realize that that was a very good decision and even if you don't get pg really consider valuing your mbbs okay with mbbs i agree you won't be able to settle in metros but india doesn't lie only in metro metro doesn't constitute even uh, 5% of india 95% of the india is outside metros so you can definitely settle in a town or a small city where you can open up your uh, clinic and settle and again down the line after a decade you will realize that you may be more successful than even your uh, post graduates or even super specialist i know many of my friends they have such an established nursing home today that we or uh, our super specialist they just uh, uh, <coughs> want to work with them so life doesn't and they are please you get well doesn't you will get next time even if doesn't next time then life will not end just start respecting whatever the degree you have that is mbbs that is good enough to earn a very decent or maybe very successful life okay so my best wishes thank you very much